and turn to Matthew uh, chapter 26, and I'm going to read the passage uh, with comment. You know the scene. Uh, the scene is our Lord before his hour and in his hour of trial and temptation and nearing crucifixion. Uh, the scene is that of Gethsemane, the place where they had often resorted, a place that was familiar to the disciples, a place that uh, Judas apparently knew and knew where to find him. And before that finding, there is this time of praying, Matthew 26, 36 to 46. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. This place of pressing, this place of crushing, this place of ancient olive trees there to this day. As I recall visiting that site there across the valley from the city of Jerusalem, and, and it's a wonderful place of a garden there across the Kidron Valley. And there is a prayer place. Uh, Judas knew. Um, he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy in, in anguish and distress of soul is the situation. Why? Well, because he was about uh, to suffer physically, yes, but not just because he was about to be betrayed by one he would call friend? Yes, but uh, because he was about to be forsaken by the disciples and, and, and denied and betrayed, and yes, but uh, in anguish of, of soul, his soul was exceedingly sorrowful and very heavy. Um, well, <clears throat> It was about to be, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me time? And in a way that we can only by faith believe or try to understand or even taste a little bit, we find him bearing the weight of sin, the sinless, spotless, perfect one, bearing the weight of all of our sin, absorbing God's wrath upon him for sins he never committed the full weight of our sin. And he saith, verse 38, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, this crushing with grief, even unto the, the point of death. Uh, tarry ye here with me and watch with me. And this plea uh, for his disciples to, to pray with him and to watch and uh, to do one of the hardest things, uh, and that is to, to pray, and not only to pray, but to listen and to pray with someone. A precious opportunity that is shared as two or three gather, and there he is in the midst. And they, he asks them to, to watch and to pray uh, with him, and to pray silently, to be alert spiritually, uh, to be alert physically, and and so he goes a little further, verse 39, and falls on his face, praying, O oh, Father, if it be possible, let this cup, this, this cup of suffering, this wrath of God, cup poured out, let it pass from me. And then this resolution, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And, and so, uh, Lord, what, what, what do you want? Uh, and this struggle of the, the human and the divine and the resolution and the resignation of our will uh, to the will of God and what an illustration it is for us in prayer uh, in this place and by our Savior in extreme bitterness of soul. He humanly, voluntarily surrenders uh, to the will of the Father in all things. And 
Then he comes, verse 40, to the disciples, and you know the story, findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, what, could you not watch with me one hour? Couldn't you uh, watch with me? Even the idea of, of, of shock, of disappointment, of need, of, of human uh, aloneness, and this desire to uh, be there. Could you not stick it out with me a single hour in this tone of, of, of disappointment and then conviction and, and watch and pray, verse 41, as he goes on, as he continues, stay alert, be in prayer, that ye enter not into temptation. Don't, don't give in, don't succumb uh, to temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he pleads with them in tenderness uh, to, to, to stay with him and to be with him. Uh, this opportunity to pray there and and to succumb not to the human passions of even the trial of 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 sleep there not sinful in itself but at this hour and at this time something that he wanted them to avoid and this drowsiness and all kinds of temptation would soon be faced by even these very ones who forsook and fled and 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 could they not be with him in the prayerful, I call it the preparation, the preparation. Uh, are you prepared for what will happen soon? Are you prepared, prepared for what will happen next? And that's the only way to be prepared is to be filled up with prayer, essential, because God's strength is stored and, and, and the defenses and the, and the opportunity to defeat all the powers of darkness. Could you not pray with me? Enter not into temptation. Uh, watch and pray. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And you know the story. He goes on again the second time and prayed, O oh, my father, if this cup may not pass uh, from me except I drink it, thy will be done. And he is resigning to this cup that must must be drunk. And, and he comes then, verse 43, and found them asleep again. Their eyes were heavy, and and he 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 lets them sleep on now, uh, verse 44, and, and, and he prayed a third time saying the, the same words in agonizing prayer. And he, he comes to the disciples again, finds them sleeping, take your rest. And the hour is at hand. The son of man is betrayed unto the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. He is at hand that doth betray me. The, the betrayer is, is here. Let's pray together before we look at some very practical admonitions and timely uh, for our church family and body together. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the preparation, Lord, of prayer in the garden. We thank you for the example that it is. We thank you for the admonition that it is. And Father, I pray that you would uh, prepare us, Lord, through prayer, that you would prepare us for whatever lies ahead for us. And we thank you for this opportunity. Help us to heed the admonition of you in the garden, dear Lord Jesus, to watch and pray that we enter not into temptation. Uh, help us, Lord, to heed the invitation uh, to, to come and to pray with you, to pray to you, to be with you. And so we thank you for the opportunity we share now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's an exciting time and a piercing question. And, and, and the question that I have, I want to give a real practical uh, invitation to. The question is this, could you not watch and pray with me one hour? And, and um, we have opportunity uh, upon us. And, and you've, you've heard of the National Day of Prayer, haven't you? Uh, you've heard of this? Yes? Yes? Yes, yes. And I, I apologize for not being big on the National Day of Prayer. I, I don't know uh, that I have ever, you know, led the charge, filled the bus, and, and got everybody together. And sometimes I worry about who's, who's all going to be praying <laughs> and how, how broad the spectrum might be in the, in the prayer. But I wonder if we could have a, you ever hear the local day of prayer? I don't know if you ever heard of that. That's <laughs> the local day of prayer. Have you ever heard of the crossroads uh, day of prayer? Uh, what are you doing this Saturday? Well, we've put in the calendar and, and, a, and a desire 
to, to have a day of prayer, a day of prayer. And, and, and I mean a day of prayer. I mean a, a, a seven in the morning till seven at night, 12, 12 hours of, of prayer. And, and I, I wonder what we'll be praying for in those 12 hours. Can we have 12 hours of prayer requests? What do you think? Are there not 12 hours of things to pray for? Could we not uh, seek? Could we not uh, uh, come before the Lord and before each other and, and, and before his presence and we're two or three and, and are gathered or more that, that, that his presence in our midst would be exciting for us to come together and pray? Could you not plan an hour uh, to come? as part of a prayer chain and vigil on this Saturday. Could you pray with us? Could you come and pray with us? Uh, By Wednesday, Lord willing, we'll have some sort of a schedule printed of a couple short messages of challenges of prayer at some different intervals with Pastor Jorge and myself, and to be able just to be challenged and encouraged to keep on, maybe some suggestions, and and then uh, an opportunity for you even to take the card in front of you and to write out some prayer requests and to hand them and to get them to us, to email, to to communicate with us, uh, 12 hours worth of praying. Wow. Does that sound exciting to anyone? To seek God, to seek his direction for our lives, for our church, to seek his power, to seek his strength, to, to, to not know or to know what is ahead of us and to surrender uh, to the will of the Father. And to, to give the, the biggest battle in all of, of life and, and, and history, uh, Jesus Christ at the cross over, uh, in this wonderful hour, precious, powerful, uh, passionate, this hour of sweating, uh, uh, this hour of trial, this hour where then angels came and ministered to him where the disciples didn't. Uh, and, and, and could we not pray together? Could we not receive a call uh, to pray together? Um, I wonder what it would take to, you know, invite you. What does it take to get you to pray? Hmm. Hmm. What might have kept the disciples uh, and us, if you will, awake? And can we draw from this passage? I had an interesting opportunity this past week. I was prayed to pay. I was paid to pray. I was paid to pray. I don't know if I've ever been paid to pray. <laughs> I'm not offering that for this Saturday. <laughs> I, I had a, a most unusual experience. Uh, it was with my car, Subi 2. Subi 1 died, and Subi 3 is there. Subi 2 is still running. And till death do us part, <laughs> still running. And, and so Subi 2 just needed some brakes, and I got the eternal brakes at AutoZone where you buy some $20 brake pads, and they guarantee them for life. And oh, are they sad. <laughs> oh, are they sad, because I have seen them at regular intervals, because that South 4th Street Hill just kind of kills my brakes and everything else I do with those brakes. And so, so I have done a few things in my mechanical uh, inexperience being a jack of uh, some trades and a pastor of one, okay, uh, I have been able to successfully uh, uh, stop the car and change some brake pads. One time I forgot to do one thing and rolled out of my driveway into East Rock Road, not South 4th Street, and it didn't stop. The pedal went just all the way down to the floor, and I forgot to pump the brakes after you do the brakes, and that's an important thing. And 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 so I, I have succeeded in the past, but my mechanic is very leery of me doing anything to my car. And he says, he says, you gotta uh you gotta you gotta have me do the brakes. You gotta you gotta come down here. And, and he invited me to just use his shop and then if I got in trouble and I had some 
brakes and some adjustments and some other things that were needed on the car. And, and so uh, he invited me to come, and if I got in trouble, he would bail me out. And I thought, well, that's a much better place of doing this because the lift and such and tools and the resource of the professional, I thought, Yes. And then as the time got closer and the parts were purchased from AutoZone for the replacement and return free brakes, and then I thought I might as well splurge and get rotors. And, and so uh, we, we got all that together. And so now we came to the date and he says to me, he says to me, the cook must stay in the kitchen, not be on the front lines. And I don't know what exactly that meant. Uh, the cook must stay in the kitchen, not be on the front lines. Because I don't know who he was referring to. But somehow in his mind, he did not want me to touch those brakes. He wanted to be on the front lines of the brakes. But the sort of that statement, uh, the cook must be in the kitchen and the soldier must be on the front lines, he asked me to go into his office and pray. And I thought, well, that's a strange request. And he was going to um, do all the work and brakes and oil change and clutch adjustment and stuff like this while I prayed. And, and so I, I thought it really strange. God didn't. And so into his office I went. And it does say office on the door. Office. The office is storage for all the oils and the parts and the grease and the this and the that. The office was totally cluttered with stuff and there was one chair in the office filled with stuff on the chair, one chair. And, and, and so it, it smelled in there and, and it was labeled office. That's the only thing that resembled office, uh, in this shop. And, and then there was this closet. The closet was huge. The closet was a big, big closet, probably this big of the size of the screen. And uh, I have a picture for you later of the closet. It was a tall closet. It had some uh, hanging clothes there for the jumpsuits for the mechanics. And then it had some on the floor. And, and, and I got in there. I just, I just went in there <clears throat> into the office. And then I thought, enter into the closet. And this closet was big enough for me to just kind of like get in. And so I got in. <laughs> Put some clothes down for my knees there to be padded. And immediately my tears just flooded my eyes. But I began to pray and thank God for yanking me from this busy, crazy life and putting me in a closet to pour out my heart before God. And God met with me there. I don't know exactly how long I prayed. I prayed for the shop, I prayed for the workers, I prayed for the worker's family, I prayed for his wife, I prayed for his son, I prayed for the bills, I prayed for this, I prayed for that, I prayed for the breaks, I prayed for everything related to that shop because he told me to pray. And he was, he, I, he was paying me to pray, he was not going to charge me for the work, I was praying, he was paying. And, and so, so I prayed, and then, I, then, then five minutes later, I said, okay, now what? <laughs> and the Lord brought what? Amen? The Lord brought what to pray for? And an hour plus later, he walked in and I could sense his presence and then he walked out. He didn't see me because I was in the closet. <laughs> and I was hoping for an interruption. So I prayed another 20 minutes and then I thought, I got to get going. <laughs> I don't know how long the repair took. Uh, he didn't think I was in the office and and I came out and we just shared 
a special time as brother to brother together of this scene. And we have planned a time of prayer. What are we going to pray for for 12 hours? God knows. God knows. And he's, he's able to, to show us. And we'll have plenty of suggestions and lists of members and attenders and events and calendars and opportunities and local and national and, and, and situations uh, near and far. Plenty to pray about for the lost souls of mankind. Uh, plenty to pray about of the growth and the spiritual and the personal and, and, and the struggle that is even painted in the humanity of Christ between uh, uh, the flesh and the spirit and the temptation and the opportunity to seek and do the will of God and the opportunity to surrender, not my will, but thy will be done. Do we have plenty to pray for? Could we fill up uh, 24 hours? Could we fill up 12? Could we pray? Could you not pray one hour? And, and what might keep us or keep the disciples uh, awake and, and present, active, and, and participant in, in, in a special prayer time. What might, what might draw you even to the crossroads to, to pray with us? And I just would like to simply, and I mean simply, go through this passage of Scripture uh, as to the when of prayer. Uh, to the when of prayer. Uh, could you not pray with me? These disciples needed to know what time it was. It was a, a special time, not physically, what time is it, 7 a.m. till 7 p.m.? Uh, what time is it spiritually? Spiritually. This was the pressing time. This was the passion time. This was the culmination time. This was a precious time in history. What time is it? What time is it? Well, we can look at a watch, but I mean, what time is it spiritually? And to my mind comes Romans chapter 13, where it says in the last few verses, verse 11 and following, and it's it says it 2,000 years ago, uh, Paul says to the Romans, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of our sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting or drunkenness, not in chambering or wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill their lusts thereof. What, what time is it? What time is it? It's time to uh, uh, watch and pray that we enter not into temptation. It's time to put the armor on. It's time to realize that now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. Do you believe that? That we are one day closer to being with Jesus Christ again. And we need to realize what time it is. We need to realize what time it is when we open our eyes and see this world. And if you haven't noticed, it is on a freight train express before our very eyes toward the end time events. A freight train express before our very eyes, if you will, on our watch. We are watching the moral demise of a nation and world on our watch. If you haven't noticed what time it is, and, and and sadly, the church of Jesus Christ is by and large asleep, by and large asleep on our watch. Could you not watch and pray? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. And our spirit is willing and we say, Lord, I want to, I want to hear you. I, I want to, uh, but the flesh, oh, wow, the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. Know the when of prayer. Secondly, I'd like you to think about uh, the who of prayer. And oh, if the disciples only uh, really, really knew the who of who they were praying with, that we're, they were praying with and, and to 
it, it, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, God incarnate, and, and he's the one who said where two or three are gathered, there am I in the midst. You say, who's going to show up? Who's going to show up? Jesus. Who's going to be there on Saturday? Jesus. Would you come? Would you come and pray with us? Would you come and pray with him? And, and, and we should be so uh, cognizant of the who is asking. Uh, and, and I don't mean to uh, somehow yank this out of a context in any such way. Uh, but, but in a wonderful way, Jesus said where two or three are gathered, and then he takes the three uh, sons and he brings them to a wonderful expression of the very phrase that he spoke just earlier in Matthew, where two or three are gathered, there am I in the midst. That's back in Matthew 18, uh, in verse 20. And he brings this two or three together, and there he is in the midst, and they're sleeping. Wow. What might keep us awake if we just were overwhelmed with who we are praying to? And sometimes I wonder, you know, now I lay me down to sleep, pray the Lord. Amen. And bless this food, please, before it gets cold, let's pray real quick. You know, I, I wonder if we, if we acknowledge, if we, if we even understand all the time just who we're praying to. And prayer and the house of prayer and the place of prayer and, and, and the who of prayer, you know, can become so, so, uh, trite and, and, and we needed to be reminded. They, if they, if they could have any time pa- think of Peter, you know, you know, Peter, you know, uh, uh, open mouth, insert foot, Peter, okay, uh, impulsive. And if he could rewind his tape, if he could rewind his life, I wonder what would rise to the top of, of the different scenes that he would like to rewind. Would it, would it be, uh, the denial time? Would it, would it be, would it be the time of, uh, of, of, you know, sinking in the water time? Would it be the time of, you know, calling down thunder upon others and, and lightning and the judgment of God? Would it, would it be, what, what time would he like to recall and redo? And like, like him, like us, probably many times, but I would think rising to the top of that would be this sleepy time. This time that he fell asleep, not remembering who was with him. I forgot who was with me one time at a stoplight. I was tired. I was at the diner, and and the sun was set quite a while, and we were talking, and one had to go to Bethlehem, and one had to go to Allentown, and the one, by miracle of God, is still here, Dave Zinni, and I volunteered to take the close one home, and someone else took the Bethlehem one home, Paul Sigmund, and and so I, I knew I was really tired. I didn't really know how tired. And and so uh, I went from the diner to Allentown and at the stoplight there by Good Shepherd Home, uh, I, I know I stopped. I don't know what happened then. I know the next thing was this loud boom and crash and I was in the middle of the intersection. I, I was awake then. I, I had no idea what happened. So I asked Dave, who was next to me, what happened? He said, I don't know. He was texting <laughs> as a passenger. <laughs> Should never be, Dave. <laughs> you shouldn't text while you passage <laughs> because you have to, you have to be awake and alert. You know, could you not? Could you not drive with me <laughs> one little trip and uh, watch and, and, and be alert so you know if the light was green or not? Because that became the important question to the policeman. Was the light green? And that became the important question to the insurance man. And that became an important question to PennDOT of whether the points were beyond. And I had to say, I don't know. I didn't say I went to sleep. I didn't know that I went to sleep. It's just that I don't remember anything. I just remember the light being red and I stopped and I didn't remember the light turning green. I tried to say that all my life, 
All my life, I would go when lights turn green, <laughs> but I didn't remember that light. I didn't remember that time. And I, I truly believe that I fell asleep at the wheel. And I, I forgot who I was with because the accident was on Dave's side. <laughs> could, could we not forget who? Could we not, thirdly, um, you know, when we think about staying awake, staying alert, could we, could we know the where of prayer? Uh, this is a, a, a special place. It's a place called uh, Gethsemane. It's a, it's a wonderful place. And it's a place where, uh, where there was prayer together, uh, in many times and other times in scripture. And I've already mentioned that Judas kind of knew the where of prayer. And, and, and so he was aware of this place of prayer. And it was a special place. And I, I would like to think that crossroads would be a special place as we come together on Wednesday nights as the backbone of the church and pray together. I would like to think on Saturday that we could come together and that we could make and take uh, the verse of scripture about the temple and talk about uh, the church of the living God being the temple and how that we could make this place a, a house of prayer and a sanctuary of prayer and a wonderful opportunity to, to meet with God. I'm glad that we can biblically and theologically do that and come together and make this place a place of prayer. But I'm glad it's not just this place, it's any place. And you can have a place of prayer of a prayer closet. And here's the picture. Uh, that, was, that was it. You can't see it too well, but those were the rags. And that was the coat, snap-on coat. And that was the closet that I dove into. Uh, you can make any place a place of prayer. I was uh, closer to God this week, uh, watching and praying. I was happy to be watching for Bambi, okay? Uh, and, and I was praying, and I, 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 you could make a place of uh, prayer in a tree. And I was up in a tree praying, and, and I felt closer to God up there, tied onto the branches and to the limb there. And, and I texted that to my wife because she was wondering where I was at, and I, I just texted her with a smile there, and that's what I look like to the deer. Oh, boy, they're so happy to see me, and, and I'm so happy to see them, and I'm, I'm so happy. I texted my wife. She said, good for you. You got out, and, and I have a wife that is actually kicking me out the door to go, dear honey, it's just an amazing thing, and so, so you could make a lot of different places. Aren't you glad? Any place can be a place of prayer, but there is a special place where two or three are gathered. There am I in the midst. Not like he's not when we're alone, and there's a special time and a special place of entering your closet. And when you've shut the door, pray to your Father which seeth in secret. And, and, and so that's a special time also. But it's a special time as we pray together and agree together in prayer and come together in prayer. Could you not pray with me uh, one hour or, or, or 12 hours or, or two or three hours of the 12 hours that we have as a day of prayer in a local sense and where well here and and be thankful that any place can be a can be a place of prayer and so we should know the the where of prayer i trust that you have special places this little closet uh has become a special place and i got out of jail this week <laughs> friday for my bible study and and showing god's not dead in prison okay and they oh, they ate it up the prisoners there and doubled their attendance and and maybe it'll double as we show the second half and the grand finale to it but it was beautiful and and then i got out of I got out of prison, and I didn't say hi to the mechanic. I didn't say hi to his wife. I didn't say hi to his coworkers. I passed them all in the, in the uh, reception area of the mechanic shop, and I went right into the office and spent some more time in prayer. And it's become a little special place for me. And I have an open invitation to pray. And I trust that you have special places of prayer, and then I trust that you have any places of prayer where we can pray everywhere and pray as we go. Uh, these disciples could have been kept alert if they knew the, the when of prayer and, and the spiritual timing of what time it is spiritually and the who of prayer that Jesus was present there and is wonderfully now, and that the where of prayer could be a, a special place. And, and fourthly, I'd like you to think of the, the what of prayer, the what of prayer. Well, what were they 
praying uh, for the what of prayer. Uh, well, they were praying, uh, stating, and this is a, a wonderful uh, example of prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ. He states, uh, if it be possible, and, and again, we can't understand this or comprehend this uh, physically with the humanity and the deity of Christ, but we are. it's there for our example. It's there for our admonition, but what illustration we find and what instruction we find, because isn't that the tension of prayer that we have? We have our will of how we think it could, we think it would work out, we think it should work out. And, and then we have God's will, and we are to surrender our will to the will of God. Uh, what a beautiful, beautiful what of prayer. What are you going to pray for? Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And it's that point of surrender where we turn everything over to God, and I mean everything, the things that we grab onto, the things that we desire, the things that we want, the things that we have all figured out. In fact, we've got it so figured out, we've got it figured out for God. Oh, don't figure that much. Don't. The link between our prayer and its answer is the will of God. And that if we pray anything according to his will, he heareth us. And it is not wrong for us to pour out our will. And our will should be a spiritual pouring out. It should not be a selfish pouring out. It should not be a me and a my and an I pouring out. It should not be just the physical and the material and the mechanical and the financial and the things that are just on our plate and before us. It should be eclipsed in all of these requests by something greater, something grander. Yea, the salvation of an entire lost humanity. And maybe God has put that obstacle, that trial, that difficulty, that sickness, that distress, that, that problem, that person, that, that relationship in our lives so that we would be able to somehow take it to the big picture, take it to the cross, to take the opportunity that it presents before us and bring it to the salvation of a soul. Wow, that's what the bigger picture is. That's what's on the plate here. And so nevertheless, thy will be done. And God, I'll, I'll take a, I'll take a broken down car if I can share a time with the mechanic. I, I'll take a, uh, an opportunity of a detour if I can meet somebody else, somebody new, somebody different for the glory of God. And, and I can surrender my will to thy will be done. And we can take it in a church way. We could say, Lord, we've got an agenda. We've got a plan. We've got this. We've got that. And we want to spiritualize it and tack a few verses on it and put even a great commission to it. But what and how and where and who does God want in even the unfolding of the plan of God for Crossroads Baptist Church? Can we surrender that to the will of God together in prayer? What an opportunity. And I believe we'd stay awake if we knew the what a prayer. And finally, I'd like you to think about in this garden, just this verse, and let it grip our souls. Lord, not my will. Not my will, but thine be done. And truly surrender. Even our will for a certain situation knowing that God's plan and God's will is what's most important. Lastly, I'd like you to think of the, the why of prayer. The why of prayer. The why of prayer is given here, and certainly there are many uh, reasons for prayer, and we could do a whole Bible study, but from this text, I'd like you just to have jump out at you the phrase of watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Why? Because there is, in a wonderful way, between the word of God and prayer, a temptation-free zone. <laughs> wow. I like that spot. I'll take that spot. A place of, of soul rest, a place of quietness, 
a place of beauty, a place of purity, a place of God's presence as we allow our heart and our life to be saturated by the word of God and prayer. And in the hour of temptation, we are able to have a victoriousness over the coming temptation and to not succumb to it and the temptation to run and to flee, the temptation to deny, the temptation to to betray, the temptation uh, to give up, to quit. The temptations were all there in front of these disciples and oh, how they needed this sweet hour of prayer with the Lord. But could you not pray with me? One hour, watch and pray that she enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And oh, how we need strength to go on and strength to get up and strength to go forward for the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's found on our knees in prayer. Could you not pray with me? One hour, says our Lord.